The Sony ZV-E1 full-frame vlogging camera is here and apart from Sony A7S III low light capabilities, it also brings enhanced autofocus performance and some interesting AI functionality to the table. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from CineD and today I'm taking a close look at the newly announced Sony ZV-E1. I had the camera for a relatively short time, but nonetheless, I'm confident I have a comprehensive view of what this camera offers and the key elements that make it a unique filming tool, especially for those who like to be and talk in front of the camera. Before I continue, here's a spoiler. I can say with confidence that the Sony ZV-E1 inherited many of the A7S III filming capabilities, but took it a step further by enhancing autofocus performance and even more importantly, added a dedicated AI processor like the one found in the A7R5 that does wonders in many ways. But first thing first, what Sony did with the new camera is a bit of a mix and match. The 12 megapixels imaging sensor comes from the A7S III and the Beyond's XR imaging processor is the same as the one found in the A7R5, the A7 IV, the A1 and A7S III. The vlogging spirit comes from Sony's ZV series of cameras and the form factor is very similar to the A7C, making it extremely compact and most lightweight full frame camera I ever worked with. Diving a bit deeper into the specifications and features, here's what one can expect from the new camera. Full frame up to 4K 60p with no crop factor, cropped 4K 120p and full HD 240p capabilities will be added to the camera around June with a free firmware update. 10-bit 4 to 2 all intra recording, S Cineton next to S log recording, in fact, there is a new cinematic VLOG setting that automatically sets the camera to record in 4K, 16x9, but with black bars for imitating 2, 35 to 1 cinematic aspect ratio, 24 or 25p depending on the camera region settings, and the default look is S Cineton, but this can be changed in the menu to one of the four additional looks. And for moods, presets for creating instant cinematic expression. One thing that I want to highlight about the cinematic vlog mode and other camera functionalities in general is how easy it is to access by simply choosing and clicking on the LCD screen. Sony did extremely well in taking some of the key features of this camera out of the menu and adding them to the screen for fast and comfortable access. When it comes to stabilizing modes, next to the already existing settings, Sony added a new dynamic active mode, which lets you crop the image even further, and by that, doing a good job. By the way, to power it all, Sony is finally using the NP-FZ100 battery, the same one that can be found in its more advanced mirrorless cameras. Okay, let's concentrate on the strength of this camera and I will start with its low light capability as the sensor is the same as the one found in the A7S III. Officially, it is not a dual ISO camera, but one can clearly see that like with the A7S III, ISO 640 and ISO 12800 are the cleanest. Even the rolling shutter performance of both cameras is similar. As for the dynamic range, we will need a bit more time to evaluate it. Okay, let's talk about autofocus. Sony added a few new recognized subjects and this makes the autofocus even more usable. It is simply working very well, be it when using the new bokeh switch to highlight a product or even when hiding the face altogether. The camera will simply stay where it was set to last without losing orientation. Another thing that works well is the new focus compensation. Look how clean changing the focus points is. But the really big news here is the new camera AI functionality. I would like to mention two things. The first is framing stabilizer. 
In this mode, the camera will attempt to keep the subject of filming in the center, regardless to where it is really positioned. The second is auto framing. When this function is engaged, the camera can crop automatically into the frame, making the video more dynamic. You can actually turn this function on inside the camera and off in case you are recording simultaneously to an external recorder. By doing so, you can get a master clip too. Needless to say that the amount of cropping or speed of changing framing can be adjusted in the camera menu. The same goes for recording an interview the operator can touch the screen and change framing between talking heads. No camera is perfect and please allow me to share with you my concerns. Maybe the biggest one is overheating. I was surprised to see how fast the camera reaches the point that it had to shut off on standard mode. So I definitely recommend using the high settings for gaining additional recording time. Next is audio quality. I have to be careful here as I'm not sure if the camera I have is somehow defective. But in any case, when setting the camera to record audio coming from the front, the amount of hiss made uh, the audio not usable. See? Mm. Okay, back to her. Slowly moving back. And Last but not least, please be aware that the soft skin setting is turned on by default. Although this feature is popular in some regions, it might not be for everyone. So I hope that Sony can change this with the firmware update. Okay, conclusion. Sony did a good job with this camera by balancing the camera performance, its usability and features for the targeted vlogger audience. Like with the A7S 3 the low light capabilities are insane and the AI tricks are working very well without feeling of losing any significant image quality. One question that must be asked is where does this new camera put the A7S 3 which is 800 euros dollars more expensive? And my answer is maybe not in such a good place. True, the A7S 3 might be a more advanced camera in some ways by targeting filmmakers, but looking at the complete package, I'm not so sure that the 800 euros dollars price difference between the two cameras is justified and this might put the A7S 3 in a difficult sales position. Oh, and this camera will be shipping during April and be sold for 2,700 euro body only or 3,000 euro with a 28 to 60 millimeter kit lens. That's it for now. Thank you guys for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.